If I spin that wheel, which dot is moving fastest, the blue one or the red one? Well, if we're talking about linear motion, the blue one has to go around a bigger circle in the same amount of time that the, little, uh, the red one goes around a little circle. So linearly speaking, the blue one is traveling a lot faster. Now, we're going to define a new kind of velocity. It's not how far down the road you get each second. It's how far around in radians you get each second. Now, if I look at this wheel, because it's rigid, every part of the wheel goes around 2 pi radians in exactly the same amount of time. That means as far as the number of radians that are traversed in a second, I would have the same number of radians per second for the blue dot, the red dot, this point on the hub, this point on the rim, every point on the wheel would have the same rotational velocity. Oh heck, I'm messing this up. I am not teaching this well. Let me turn it over to the master teacher, Calvin's dad. He can teach better than anyone else. Playing a record, I'll show you something interesting. A record is a big old CD out of plastic. <laughs> Okay. Compare a point on the label with a point on the record's outer edge. They both make a complete circle in the same amount of time, right? Yeah. But the point on the record's edge has to make a bigger circle in the same time, so it goes faster. See, two points on one disc move at two speeds, even though they both make the same revolutions per minute. That man can teach, okay? There is no possible way to say that any more clearer than that. And yet, the result is this. My point here is that some of you are going to come away from this week feeling like Calvin. Don't let that happen. It's not that hard. It really is a simple connection that we can make between linear motion and rotational motion. If you feel like Calvin, you need to talk to me, you need to talk to your TA, you need to go to the health center, you need to talk to someone, because it's not hard. I promise, it's not hard. Now, let's talk about this angular velocity. We call it omega. We give it the Greek symbol omega, omega. It's not a W. Okay? Now, the operational definition should look familiar. When we were talking about linear velocity, the magnitude was just how far you got down the road divided by how many seconds it took to get there. So, <coughs> with angular motion, angular velocity, the magnitude, instead of how far down the road we get, it's how far around we get in radians, divided by how much time it takes. Now the difference, the big difference between these two equations is that if I start here, and I go to the right, and then I go to the left, and I come right back to my starting place, what's my delta x? Zero. Okay, But when we deal with angle, we don't zero it out each time we get back to our starting position. In other words, if I start here, that would be 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, 10 pi. I just keep on counting. I don't zero out. Okay?